Uh, we wrapped up with chapter number one last week, uh, and we took our time, amen. It, it was, it's been a good study so far, and I'm excited to see what else the book of 1 Peter has for us. Um, and so we look forward to that. Uh, so we're looking at chapter two. And so last week, or I should say this week, I, I got the opportunity to go to teen camp. And let me tell you what a blessing it was. Uh, you know, you go for teenagers and, uh, and, and for them to be blessed, but I was blessed as well. You know, one thing that I don't realize is with doing all the preaching, I don't get a lot of preaching. And the truth of the matter is we need preaching. Preachers need preaching. Pastors need preaching. And so I, I was encouraged as I was preached that and, you know, convicted and, and, and changed and, and, and seeing what the Lord had for my life as well. And, and really, when we come together as a church, that, that's the question that we should be asking ourselves. What is God trying to tell me in his word? What, what is God trying to communicate with me? And so last week, uh, as we look at 1 Peter, uh, we see the common theme of suffering. Uh, we, we looked at obeying the Spirit. And we talked about how God uses His perfect Word and, and to reveal truth unto us. And, and God uses His Spirit to convict us and to, and to convince us about the truth of Scripture and the changes that we need to make in our lives. Uh, I, I mean, you cannot come to, to know the Scripture and to see what God says and to see the reality of, of the world in your life and, and not make a change. Because not all, none of us have arrived. All of us are, are working our way to becoming more Christ-like. We, we talked about that last week. We talked about sanctification, the process of being and becoming more like Jesus. And, and it's an ongoing process. Uh, I mean, until the day that Jesus comes back, we, either we die or Christ comes back, which other one happens first, we will continue, or let me put it this way, we should continue to, to, to be more like Christ. And so we're, we're continuing along that same idea. Uh, let's look at 1 Peter chapter number 2, uh, looking at verse number 1. Uh, and we're going to read all the way to verse 3. And I know we touched on these verses last week, but the Lord really uh, impressed upon me to spend some time here. And so I wanted to move right along, and it's, it's almost like, it's almost like you're, you're going on, let's say you're going on a trip, and, and you have a destination in mind, you want to go to the Grand Canyon, or you want to go to these, these nice mountains, and you go to enjoy yourself, but your destination is, is, that, is, is that mountain, the, 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 the big, uh, uh, the site that you're there to see. But sometimes it's good to just stand back and smell the flowers, right? It's like you see something along your way there that catches your attention. You say, hey, guys, let's slow down. Let, let's see what's here. Let, let's take it in. That, that's my goal today is to really just take in what, what the Bible is saying. Uh, and so let's look at verse number one in chapter number two. Uh, the Bible says, wherefore, uh, as a result of this, as a result of, of, of the word of God, that endureth forever, that, that, you, that the Holy Spirit uses to change your life as becoming more Christ-like, wherefore, look what it says, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. And, and really, when we're studying the Bible, what we want to do is look for key words. And, and a lot of times, the key words are the verbs. And, and so, look, verse 2, I'm going to read it again. As newborn babes, right, laying aside all that, ba all, all, that, all that stuff, all the stuff of the old life, as newborn babes, look what it says, desire the sincere milk of the word. And, and today, I, I want to talk about our desires. And, and really, the title of this message is, is A Desire for God. Let's, let's uh, pray and ask the Lord to be with us this morning. Lord, thank you for today, Lord. Thank you for just the incredible blessings that you have provided in our lives. Lord, Lord, we, we, we understand that it might not always seem like it, Lord. There are so many things in life that upset us, that, that befall us, that, that, that distract us, and, and Lord, just, just cause us to doubt. But, Lord, you have blessed us so mightily. 
Lord, you have provided for us in such an incredible way. Lord, I, I, I pray this morning that we not miss the message of today. Lord, help us to open our, our, our minds and, and our hearts and, and listen intently with, with listening with, with the intent to be changed, to, for, with the intent to be transformed, giving your Holy Spirit the freedom to work in our lives. Lord, I pray that you use me as a willing vessel, uh, as a mouthpiece of your word, Lord, that we hear from you, that you be glorified, and that our lives be transformed into change and into images of your Son. Father, we need your help. Meet with us this morning as we study your text and we explore what you have for us. And Father, we love you and we pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So, so a desire for God. And so we know that as Christians, when we come to a saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we begin a transformation process. And then we are. We talked about last week how uh, the Bible reveals to us the truths of the Word of God. No, no, the world is going to feed you lies. The, the Bible tells you the truth, and He reveals to us the truths of God's Word. And, and, and our job is to respond to how the Holy Spirit of God is working in us. And, and so, and our desires is what should begin to change. No, 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 what we want now should be different from what we wanted before. You know, I, I believe uh, it was Brother Wagner that put it, our wanter should change. And, and so today, I, I, I want this to be really a, a, a look in the mirror this morning. When, you, when we talk, when we see the, the truths revealed in this word, and the message that God has for us this morning, I want us to look in the mirror and ask ourselves the question, is this me? Does my life reflect what God desires my life to be? And so, uh, the desi- a change in desire is, is an evidence of your sanctification. Well, well Pastor, how, how do I know that I've truly been saved? Well, the Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The, the, the Bible says, he that believeth on him shall have life. It, 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 is, it, it is a faith in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and his finished work. And an evidence of your salvation that God has truly uh, is truly working in your life is that your desires begin to change. So I, I, I like to define words. I, I think it really helps us to wrap our minds around what we're talking about. So the word desire means an emotion or excitement of the mind directed to the attainment or possession of an object from which pleasure, sensual, intellectual, or spiritual is expected. A passion excited by the love of an object or the uneasiness at the want of it. Interesting. And directed to its attainment or possession. And, and, and definitions are one thing, but let, let me just put it like this. It, it is a longing of the heart. What is it that we long for? What is it that we desire? Uh, once upon a time... We just long for the things of this world. Once upon a time, we long for whatever things made us happy. But, but Christian, what we should not long, we should not just desire to direct our attention what makes us feel best. What we should desire is to long for a heart for, to have a desire for God. That is what we should long for. And, and, and our desires should reflect that. Our wants should reflect that. The way that we live our lives should reflect that. And, and really, what you desire the most, the thing that you want to, that you seek most to obtain, it says a lot about you. Uh, because whatever your heart desires, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What is in your heart will come out, in your actions, in your words, in your behaviors. So uh, let's, let's just continue as we look at uh, this desire. But first, let's look at the self-serving nature of the flesh. L- let's look at verse 1. It says, Wherefore, right, uh, laying aside, put it aside, laying aside, look what it says, all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. So wh- wh- what does the flesh desire? Well, the flesh desires to satisfy itself. It wants whatever makes you feel good. That is what 
uh, it desires. Really, the flesh, what it does is it's chasing a feeling. And as Christians, we are not called to chase our feelings. We are not called to be controlled by our feelings, right? Uh, chase, and it's it's not it's, and it's not wrong with just wanting something, right? It's not it's not wrong to want something in and of itself. But the difference is is chasing a feeling, chasing a desire, chasing what you want. But here's the key: it doesn't matter who gets hurt in the process. It, it doesn't matter what other people think. Your testimony doesn't matter. You want what you want, and you don't care what anybody else says, and you don't care what God says, and you're just going to go after it regardless of the consequences. That is the way the flesh operates. And as Christians, we, we have Christian desires and godly desires, but the difference is, is what we value most is what God thinks. And we value mo- and we value our testimony, and, and, we, and we value our brothers and sisters, and we value the effect that, that our actions has on other people's lives. That is the difference. And so what, what's most important should be what God thinks. <laughs> Excuse me. So let's break these down. Let's break these, the, these words of, of the scripture here. Uh, let, let's look at the word malice here. The word malice is, is an extreme enmity of the heart or malevolence. Uh, it's a disposition to injure or, or, or to be harmful to others. Uh, and this is, for sure, the very nature of the flesh. And the reason why you're doing it, the reason why all these things that we're going to break down here in just a second, is because you're chasing a feeling. I, I mean, we, we think about if you, if you enter, uh, let's say, a, a, a kindergarten classroom today, uh, I mean, little, little, little children, we know they're adorable, they're cute, but listen, they are one of the most malice, uh, maleficent people out there. And what do you, Pastor, how can you say that? Have you seen some of the things that kids do to each other nowadays? The, 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 the extreme uh, hurtful words and, and, and the hurtful actions and, and all these things. It's that sinful nature coming out of them. And, and parents, you, we need to catch that before it's too late. Let me say that. We need to catch that before it's too late. But, but my point is, is that we, we see the malice come out of people, young people and old people. But, but why is it, why is it that a little kid can, can just steal something from another kid or hit another kid or, or whatever the case may be and, and call a kid names? Well, how is it that such a child can do that? Well, what they're chasing is a feeling. What they're chasing is to make themselves feel better at the expense of another. That, 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 is, that is malice. Uh, but, and so they do it to feel better about themselves. What's that next word? It says the word guile. It's, it's, it's a cunning, it, it's a deceitfulness. It's, it's, it's I'm gonna, I want what I want, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to get it. I'm going to lie, I'm going to steal, I'm going to do whatever I need to get what I want, because what I want is what's most important to me. That, that, is, that, that, is, that is guile. It, it's, it's, it's you lying, right? You know, those, whether it's a convenience lie, whether it's a lie of, of, oh, it just helps me to get what I want, and you don't care what other people think. And look, what's the next one? Hypocrisies. Ah, that, that, that's, a, that's a famous one. Huh? That, that, that's one that we pay a lot of attention to. Hypocrisy is an attitude or a mindset of, 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 hey, looking at somebody else's life and saying, hey, what you're doing is wrong. But, but the, the, what's lacking is a look in the mirror and seeing that while you're, while you, you yourself have that same problem and you're calling somebody out. And, 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 you're, and the reason why you're doing that is because you want to elevate yourself above another person. You, you know, in order to judge somebody in a malicious way, in order to look down on somebody, you first have to fill yourself up with pride and think that you're better than that person. Because in order to look down on somebody, you first have to elevate yourself and think of yourself more highly than that person. That, 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 that's what, and so when a person is hypocritical, what they fail to see is they fail to look in the mirror. Let's look at the next one. Envies. Envies, though, I mean, this is as fleshly as it gets. I mean, I want what he has. Uh, I mean, Brother Mike has a nice Bible, and he brings him to church. I, and I would say, man, man Brother Mike, I, I, you have some nice Bibles. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do my best. Is, can, can I see that, brother? Can I see that? I'm going to take this home with me because I want it, and I don't care what anybody else has to say about it. I, I mean, we laugh, but how often do you see a child be like, hey, 
I like that toy. And the kids are running after each other and saying, hey, I want this toy. I want that toy. And, and, and I just want, again, what makes me feel good. And evil speakings is the next one. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. The things that we do, right? We, we know iniquities is a sin in the heart that causes us to sin, right? right? It's, it's, it's the, all these things that we talked about, uh, uh, malice, guile, hypocrisies, envies, all those things are, are, are the condition of our heart that causes us to sin. Why, why, why did you throw that toy at that other little kid? Well, he hit me, and I wanted him to feel bad because I felt bad. That, that, that is, that is, that is the, 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 the condition of the heart that caused you to sin. But what's my point? All of these are fleshly. All of these are, are really, and, and, I, and I use kids as, 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 as a kind of a lighthearted way, but all of us, to some degree, have these things within us. But what does the Bible say? It says, wherefore, laying aside. Hey, hey, hey. Those desires that you ought not to have, Christian, don't pay attention to them. Don't feed into them. Don't, 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 uh, uh, don't uh, feed yourself. Don't, don't do something just to make yourself feel better. The Bible has called you to lay, so, lay those desires aside. And, and so, but, but the key thing is, is that we don't have to want these things anymore. Like, 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 listen, th this is the thing about, about, about sin, is, is that sin entraps us, and, and sin uh, is the, the old antidote is still true. Sin will take you farther than you want to go, it will keep you there longer than you want to stay, and it will cost you more than you were willing to pay. But as Christians, having our lives changed ha ha and going this, ongoing this transformation process, we no longer uh, ha are, are enslaved to sin, and when we can overcome our flesh, and we can overcome these desires of our heart that, let's be honest, ruin our lives and ruin the lives of other people around us. We have the ability to overcome those. You might say, Pastor, how do I do that? Well, last week we talked about uh, is, is the truth of God's words and seeing what God has for you and seeing what the, the truth that God is trying to communicate with you and allowing the Holy Spirit of God to work in your life, to transform you, to change you from the inside out. But here's the thing, Christian, it starts with obedience. Amen. It starts with, God, I know what I want, and, and Lord, I know it's not good for me, but God, I want to surrender myself to you, and Lord, I want to just submit myself to you, and, and Lord, I want my desires to change. I want to do what pleases you. Amen. Our desires can change. But let, let's talk about a desire for God. Christian, there should be a longing for God and the things of God in your life. If there is not a longing for God, and, and let me put this in there. If there's not a, a conviction when we do wrong and there's no desire to please God, I, 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 would, I, would, uh, I would urge you to talk to somebody about that right away. You can come to me. If, if, there's, no, if there's no conviction when you sin, if there's not a longing for God or the things of God, I have to ask myself the question, have you truly accepted the Lord as your Savior? Because we know that in that point, that, that although we don't look like Christ tomorrow, we don't look like this, 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 this Christian that uh, you know, has been working on himself for 50 years, but no, 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 if this, if this is sin, we should be making progress this way towards the Lord. We should be making progress. And in your life, there should be a longing for God to please Him, to, to, to uh, do what's best for our, our friends, our neighbors, our loved ones. There's, there, should, there should be a change in your want or your wanter. I like that. Your wanter. Uh, our desires should change. See, listen, when I was, uh, as, as children growing up, we, we have a certain uh, desire, right? Uh, when I was a kid, I liked, uh, you know, I liked dinosaurs, I liked Legos, I liked cartoons, and, you know, I'm, I still like those things, but uh, not to the same degree. It, it was probably a bad example. Uh, you know, when I was, when I was young, I, I just had a different set of desires, right? Well, what, what, what does a young person want to do? They, well, they want to be lazy. You want to be popular at school. You want uh, everybody to like you. You want all, all these different things that you want. 
But listen, as you grow up, as you continue to change in the Lord, as you let God transform your life, those things should start to change. There should be a difference in you. And that change should be evident to the people around you. We should say, hey, what's going on with Brother Dale? He no longer cusses and, 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 and makes a, well, we laugh because we, how can we never picture Brother Dale doing that? Oh, Brother Dale doesn't cuss and he doesn't throw a rage and a fit. No, no, no. What, what's happening is he's allowing God to transform his life and work on his life. Are we doing the same? You should have a desire of the things of God. There, there, there should be a desire in you to read your Bible. There should be a desire to spend time with God. There, there, there should be a desire to go soul winning. There should be a desire to fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ. There should be a desire to serve others. These are spiritual things. These are things that uh, God works in us and gives us the desire to do. There should be a desire to volunteer. I mean, let, let me put this out there. If nobody's going to do it, it's not going to get done. We cannot have the attitude of somebody else will do it, and I'm just going to wait for somebody else to do it because I'm too busy to do it. Church, we cannot have that attitude. We cannot have that attitude. Uh, if, if, we don't, if we don't desire to, 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 to step up, if we don't desire and say, Lord, uh, whatever it is you want me to do, Lord, I'll do that. Lord, whatever, however it is, my friend, my neighbor, however it is I can be a blessing in their lives, Lord, I'll do that. And there, there's a proactiveness that should be in your heart and in your mind. What we see about the ministry of Christ is he didn't just wait around for things to happen. Right? He didn't wait... <laughs> He didn't wait around for inspiration. No, no, he knew what was important to do. He knew what God wanted him to do, and he did it. Christian, in our lives, it should be exactly the same way. We, we, we see the truth that God has told us. We should see the needs that are out there in this world. Stop sitting around. Just, let's, let's just do it. Let's, let's get to action. And, and the question is, is, say, brother, I get what you're saying. The question is, why is it that some people get it? Why is it that some people have these desires? No, no, I'm talking about Christians now. Why is it that some people get it, some people do it, some people are involved and, and grow and, and, and love the Word and love the Lord? Why is it that we see some people do it and get it and other people don't? Why is this? Well, simply put, because you lack desire. Listen, at the end of the day, people will do what they want you to do. At the end of the day, God is not going to force you to love him and serve him and do all these things. That is the reality of the situation. God will never force himself upon you. You have to, what's that word we talked about yesterday or last week? Starts with an O. Obey, obey the spirit of God in your life. But, but you can say, all right, I, I get that they don't desire, but Why? Right? I love this why question. It's, 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 it's a good thing to ask why. Why is it that you lack desire? Well, here's an idea. Is that you've been spending too much time fulfilling the desires of your flesh. Listen, you can't have it both ways. It, it, it's, either, it's either you serve God and you grow in desire and you commit to read your word over here or you're committing to, to fulfill the desires of your flesh, not caring what happens, not caring what other people think, and not caring who gets hurt along the way. It's one of the two things that's it's, it's what's going to happen. See, see, the lie that we think is, is happening is, is that we're just staying right here, is we're just staying in the middle. That, that you know, I'm not, I'm not really, you know, uh, you know I'm, not, I'm not stepping out in faith. And, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not really, you know, reading my Bible that much. And, and I'm not really serving. And, I, and I'm, not, I'm not really doing all these things. But we think that we're staying right here. But what we're doing is we think we might even have our sights on the Lord. But if we continue to feed the desires of the flesh before we know it, well, we're going to be moving this way and not even realize it. We're going to be moving this way. And, 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 then, and then when tragedy strikes... We say, Lord, where are you? What happened? Lord, oh Lord, I, I had my eyes set on you while moving backwards. Lord, I, I, I had my eyes set on you. I know I wasn't doing what you've called me to do. 
But Lord, I have had my eyes set on you. But friend, you've been feeding the desires of your flesh. So don't be surprised when tragedy strikes and you find yourself saying, Lord, what happened? My relationship with you isn't what it should be. My relationship with you, uh, Lord, I, I don't feel the joy in my heart. I don't feel the peace in my heart. I don't, I, I, I don't feel the, the, the fruits of the spirit, the joy, the love, the peace, uh, long suffering. We, I don't feel all these things. It's because you've been spending too much time here. You've been spending too much time entertaining your flesh. Listen, Christian, whatever you feed, that is what will grow. Whatever you feed, that is what will grow. If you have, um, if you have a sponge, if you have two sponges, if you give one water, what happens? It grows, right? It expands. If if you take the other one, and 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 you just leave it out to dry, it doesn't even it doesn't grow, does it? What actually happens? It it dries up, right? It shrivels up. It it, it becomes uh, uh, it starts looking less of, of a sponge. It's it, it, it you see it on in the in the back of your of your of your uh, you know your drawer or whatever. You look 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 at this disgusting thing. What happened? I, it's been forgotten about. It's been dried up. And what what are we likely to do? We're likely to toss it away. toss it away, friends. That that is many of our of our. Uh, Christian lives. You've been feeding too much of the flesh. And you've been letting go of the Spirit of God. But listen, friend, that, that Spirit of God, it's not too late. It can be renewed. It can be made whole. God, God can still do mighty things in your life. You just have to get your focus where your focus needs to be. Start feeding the flesh. Whatever you feed will grow. Whatever you feed will grow. Listen, you can be in church every single Sunday and still backslide. You, you, you can still, listen, you, you, you can still be involved in all the activities that we have, all the church functions, be at every service, and still backslide. Why? Because you're not dealing with what's in there. You're coming to service, and you're not listening to the Holy Spirit of, of God. And, and I don't know, I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. If you are, it, it's, it's, it's your responsibility to deal with it. But understand, it is, 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 don't be drawn away by the desires of your flesh. See, Solomon was somebody who was the wisest man to ever live other than the Lord himself. Uh, but the Solomon, uh, although he had wisdom, he was a foolish man because he didn't listen to it. 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 1. Solomon was this wise king, and people looked for him for, for, for counsel, and they, and they wanted uh, to know what he knew. But 1 Kings chapter 11, turn, turn there real quick. 1 Kings chapter 11. I, I want you to see it. First Kings chapter 11, looking at verse 1. It's good when you hear pages turning. Amen. It's, you want to you see it. You want to hear from the Lord. It's good. It's good. So it looks like I hear less pages turning. So First Kings chapter 11, look at verse 1. It says, the Bible says, But King Solomon, look what it says, loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites. This says, King Solomon loved many strange women. That's what his heart desired. Although he was a wise man, look what he didn't do. He didn't deal with these desires in here. Verse 2. Of, ki- of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go into them. That's what God said. God said, hey, Christian, listen, stay away from it. Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn, look what it says, they will turn away your heart after their gods. And look what Solomon did. Solomon clave unto these in love. Listen, there are things in your life that God has told you to stay away from. There, there are things in life where I believe God is convicting you right now or has told you in the past, hey, Christian, this is not good for you. It, we ought to be wise to listen to God. 
Because that, that, that desire for sin in the flesh, it will grow. It will manifest. It will turn into something ugly and disgusting. But listen, we ought not to feed into it. Verse 3 says, And he had 700 wives, princess says, and 300 concubines. Look what it says. What God said would happen, happened. And his wives turned away his heart. The Bible says to keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. We have to make sure that we're guarding our heart, friends. We, we, ought, we ought to make sure that we're listening to the Holy Spirit of God in our lives when he tells you, hey, Christian, you shouldn't be watching that show. Hey, Christian, you shouldn't be spending so much time with that person. Hey, Christian, you, you should not put your eyes and your affections into those things that ultimately it, it's, it's what separated us from God. It's what Jesus Christ died for. We ought to not spend our attention, our desires, longing after those things. And so the question is, is why do people turn from God? Ultimately, we, we saw Solomon turn his heart from God. We, we know he gave into the flesh. But listen, there, there, are, there are times in our life, and, and I, I, want us, I want us to listen, I want us to get this. There are times in our lives where we come to a key decision point, where we say, where some, a choice is presented in front of us, where we say, we know that it's not good for us we are presented with a choice. And why is it that people turn from God? Why is it that people fall away? Ultimately, because they want to. God will never force himself on you. God will never choose you. To, uh, uh, God will never make you pick him. The reason why people do what they do in life is because they want to. You might ask the question, is it possible to want to please God? Say, Oh, this is God and the things of God. Is it possible to want to please God? And is it also possible to want the things of this flesh and the things of the world? It absolutely is possible. Uh, we still have flesh and we still have those desires. And, and until the Lord comes back and gives us new bodies, we will still struggle with that. So it's, still, it's possible to want two things at the same time. It absolutely is. But when, the, when push comes to shove, and when we're, when we're presented with a decision, what do people do? People will do what they really want to do. And then that very choice is what destroys many people's lives. It is that, no, you, you may want the things of God, but you want the things of this world. And friend, you will be presented with that choice, that option to choose one or the other. What are you going to choose? When, when presented with a choice, if a, if a great enough temptation were to stand in front of you, are you confident? that you would say, nope, I'm not paying attention to that. I'm going to spend my life here. Are, are you confident in that today, Christian? See, when I was a young teenager, I, there, there comes a point of decision in your life where, where, where you, you spent time you know, growing up, learning under your parents, you know, going to Sunday school, coming to church, learning what it is that God wants you to do. But there, will com there comes a point in a young person's lives where they're no longer under the authority and rule of their parents. And there will come a point where they have to make the decision, am I going to follow after God or am I going to follow after this world? And what is it that young people choose? They choose whatever they want to choose. They choose what they really want. You, you know why so many young people turn away from the church, turn away from God, and, 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 never, and don't look back? Because this is where their heart is. They want these things. You, you, you're not really feeding. You're not, really, you're not spending time in the Word. You're not longing after God. You're not thankful for the sacrifice that Christ made for you. And you're not chasing after these things, but you're chasing after what you really want to. And adults, we're just as guilty of that. And so why do we live for God now? What, what, what compels us? What, what, why should we go this way and not that way? Why do we, I mean, think about it this way. We're all at church on a Sunday morning. We've all decided to get up, come to church. 
Why is it that we have decided to live our lives, and, and, and at least you're living it physically, your heart might be somewhere else, but you've decided to separate yourself, to live after God, to come to church, to listen to preaching, to study the Word, to dedicate yourself to the Lord. You've decided to do that. Why is it that we do that? Because we see how much better it is to live for God than to live for the world. And the, and the sad reality of, this, of the situation is that some people, it is only after they've been beaten, bruised, battered down, living after their flesh, that they come crawling back to God. And, all, and, and us, if you're sitting here today, uh, I believe that as most of us in this room that at some point have tasted the world and have decided that this is the better life to live. Because once you experience the grace of God and how good he is, how magnificent he is, and, 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 and you see the, the blessings of being in his grace, you realize this is what I should have picked from the very beginning. And, and you realize that living that life is unfruitful. Living, living that life is, is, un, is, is, is unfulfilling. And our desires, the reason why we do BBS, the reason why we do boot camp, the reason why we do outreach is to stop people from going over there. And if they're, if they're over there, to, to pull them back, reel them in, and get them living life after God. And so we see the, the blessings of God. Verse number two, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so, be ye have tasted, tasted, experienced, you, you, you felt, you, you, you know how good God is and how gracious he is. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Why do I live for God? I see the grace that he showed me when I was living over there. Why do I live for God? Because I see the, the, the pain and the suffering that comes from over there. Uh, why, why do I live for God? Because I've, decided, I've committed to live for him, and, 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 you know, I struggled. And I went back over there many times after committing to go over there, and, and, it, and it was a struggle. It, it, was, it was like a tug of war going back and forth. And, Christian, that is our lives today. It's a tug of war. But once, once you let him, once you surrender to him, it, the struggle will diminish and diminish. Why? Because your desires will begin to change. I don't want those things anymore. My flesh tempts me with them, and it's still a temptation, but I don't want those things anymore the way that I wanted them before. Why? Because God has changed me. Because I see how good he is. And, 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 I, and I still mess up, but uh, I'm not perfect by any means. But friend, there is forgiveness in Christ Jesus. The, it doesn't matter how far you've fallen. It, it doesn't matter how... Uh, how far your heart has strayed from the Lord, there is still forgiveness in Christ Jesus. It, it doesn't matter what your sin is. It doesn't matter how badly you messed up. It doesn't matter how bad you've hurt others. Jesus died for the sin of all. And he is willing and able to forgive you today. And he wants you back on the right path. See, Jesus was the best example of, of, of having the right desires because I'll tell you what, I, I, the thing that Jesus wanted, uh, second thing he wanted the least was to be separated from eternity from his father. Because that is what his heart longed for. He, imagine one day we will be in heaven together with the Lord. And, and, all, and all these things, all, all, all the sufferings and, and all the bad experiences of this life will pass away. And we will be with God forever, with, uh, with God together for eternity. And imagine that. Imagine how much you long after that. That, 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 the, the, uh, that the sickness, that the health problems, that, that the, the suffering, the, 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 the betrayals, all, all the bad things of this life will one day pass away. Well, guess what? Jesus gave that up. Why? Because he desired to get you out from over there. What he least desired, I would say, is to lose that relationship with God. But you know what he desired? Just, just enough to do it? Is he desired to save you from over there. He set the example for us. And so I'm wrapping up here. As Christians, we should see a change in desire in our lives. As we grow, the things that we want change. 
as we grow, the things that we long after begin to change. But, but it starts with a commitment every day. God, I commit to live for you. I know I'm going to mess up. I know that I'm going to sin. Lord, I know these things, and, and it's, it's going to happen. But God, I know you're gracious. I know that if I commit myself to you, you will commit yourself to me and will grow me and shame and shape me and transform me. You know, the grace of God is on those who are obedient more. No, no, the grace of God is on all the, all the world and everybody around. That we, we see the grace of God poured out upon man. But when you commit to live for him, listen, friends, he provides for you in such an amazing way. He takes care of you in a way that, that the rest of the world has no idea. So let, let, me, let me ask you this again. When we look in the mirror, we look in the mirror today, this morning, are your desires reflect what God wants for you? If not, friend, we need, that's something that we need to commit to him today. What do you really want? What is it that you long for? Is it the things of God or the things of this world? Search your heart today. Everybody could please stand, head bowed, eyes closed. We're going to have a time of invitation.